Hey guys, right here I have a 2014 BMW X5 xDrive 35i. And today I'm going to make a startup and full vehicle tour video of it. Show you the features inside and out. So, here is the key fob, let's go ahead and start it up first. As you can see the side mirrors are currently folded out upon locking the car and pressing and hold on the lock button. The side mirrors will automatically fold in. And upon unlocking, the side mirrors will automatically fold out again. Also, if you press and hold on the unlock button, you are able to roll down all four windows simultaneously and to roll them back up together, just press and hold on the lock button. As simple as that. The X5 xDrive 35i does come standard with BMW's Comfort Access which is basically BMW's version of a keyless entry and start system. So, just have the key fob on yourself, the doors are currently unlocked. Press this ribbed area to lock the doors. Long press the ribbed area to fold the side mirrors in. And to unlock the doors, simply tap the area behind the door handles. With that keyless entry comes keyless start as well. To start, make sure the key fob is inside the car. Put your foot on the brake. And press the start button to the left of the steering wheel. This X5 has travelled 3,736 kilometres so far. The X5 comes with an electric rack and pinion power steering system with Servotronic, which is a system designed to adjust the amount of assistance the steering needs at any given speed. Standard on the X-Drive 35i is a leather wrapped steering wheel with sport grips at the 10 and 2 o'clock positions. The X5 xDrive 35i gets an 8-speed sports automatic transmission. To put the electronic gear lever into drive, put your foot on the brake, hit the unlock button to the right of the lever and pull the lever all the way down. Clicking it over to the left while in drive activates sport mode and tipping it up or down while in this position activates the steptronic manual shifting. Another way of shifting manually is via the pedal shifters on the back of the top two steering wheel spokes where the pedal on the left downshifts and the one on the right upshifts. For reverse, click the lever back into drive, hit the unlock button and push the lever all the way up. Shifting into reverse activates the parking sensors, the parking sensors diagram and the reverse camera, the last two showing up on the 10.2 inch iDrive display. Using the iDrive control knob down the center console, we are able to select a few different options from the row of menus to the left. From here, we can activate the surround view camera, adjust the brightness and contrast of the reverse camera display, turn off the parking guidance lines, and also turn off the obstacle marking for the parking sensors. For park, hit the P button right on top of the gear lever.
The surround view camera, reverse camera and parking sensors can be turned on or off manually via the button that is marked with a P on the right side of the center console. The button right below that activates the front view camera where you can also adjust the brightness and contrast using the iDrive control knob. The bottom most button turns on or off the hill descent control. Now, for the top 3 buttons, the one right on top, if pressed once, activates the traction control. If the same button is pressed for a longer period of time, the stability control is deactivated. The two buttons below this is the driving experience control switch, which cycles between Eco Pro, which is the mode that gears the car towards better fuel efficiency, Comfort, which is the standard setting, Sport, which gears the car towards a more spirited drive, and Sport Plus, which turns off most of the driving aids and gives drivers a more fun and dynamic driving experience. In terms of safety, the X5 gets 6 airbags, anti-lock braking system with electronic brake force distribution and brake assist, dynamic braking lights, dynamic stability control, automatic stability control, cornering brake control, dynamic traction control, immobilizer, and ISOFIX child seat anchor points for the outer two seats on the second row. Let's now turn on the hazards, lights, front and rear fog lights, take a look at the engine, and roll down the driver's side window. The slits that you see on the front fenders here are actually functional. BMW calls these slits air breathers. Air breathers work in tandem with a pair of slits right by the lower edges of the front bumper called air curtains. Their function is to reduce aerodynamic drag around the front end and simultaneously increase fuel efficiency. The X5 xDrive 35i gets 19 inch Star Spoke Style 449 light alloy rims wrapped in Pirelli Scorpion Verde 25550 R19 run flat tires. Ventilated disc brakes are found at all four corners, and for the suspension, there are double wishbones up front, while the rear gets a multi link setup with an adaptive self leveling air suspension system. The latter is exclusive to the XDrive 35i variant. The approach angle, departure angle, and brake over angle for the X5 is 25 degrees, 20 degrees, and 20 degrees respectively. When the first generation X5 was launched in 1999, it represented the first SUV ever created by BMW. It was launched at a time when premium SUVs were slowly gaining popularity and also as a response to the launch of the Mercedes-Benz M-Class which debuted a couple of years before the X5. Another point to note is that the first generation X5, codenamed E53, was developed during a period when BMW owned Land Rover. Hence, a lot of technology and design were shared with Land Rovers of the era and in subsequent years, BMW improved on the technology gained. The second generation X5, which was on sale from 2006 to 2013, spawned an M variant which was introduced in 2009 and it became the first M vehicle with 4-wheel drive, an automatic transmission, and a turbocharged engine. The third generation X5, codenamed F15, was unveiled in 2013 with new technologies updated designs, and the X5's first four-cylinder engine in the form of either the X-Drive 25D or the S-Drive 25D, where the latter also features the X5's first rear-wheel drive configuration. The X-Drive 35i variant gets BMW's 
N55B30, 3 liter, dual overhead cams, 24 valves, turbocharged inline 6 engine with direct fuel injection, a twin scroll turbo, and variable valve timing. This engine produces 306 horsepower from 5800 to 6000 rpm and 400 newton meters of torque from 1200 to 5000 rpm. 0 to 100 takes 6.5 seconds and the top speed is rated at 235 km per hour. With an 85 litre fuel tank, the X5 XDrive 35i is said to have a combined fuel consumption of 8.5 litres per 100 km. 197 grams of carbon dioxide is emitted per kilometre and the XDrive badging means that this X5 is all-wheel drive. April 2014 saw the launch of the F-15X5 in Malaysia. It came in as completely built-up units from the United States in two variants, the X5 X-Drive 30D and the X5 X-Drive 35i, the diesel variant being the cheaper option. In August 2014, local production of the X5 began, again with the same two variants, but now with a cheaper price tag and more equipment for both variants. Exterior features of the X5 X-Drive 35i includes automatic adaptive LED headlights, LED front and rear fog lights, LED front side and rear indicators, LED daytime running lights, LED rear lights, LED number plate lights, automatic wipers, automatic high beams, front and rear parking sensors, aluminium running boards, BMW individual exterior line satin aluminium, satin aluminium roof rails, and the design pure experience scheme that brings stainless steel elements on the engine guard at the front, side and rear, unique front air inlets, and the dual exhaust pipes and kidney grill slats in titanium effect. Right down there you do have some storage together with a bottle holder and right up here you do have a speaker, your rear hatch control, your mirror controls, window controls, all of them are fully automatic in both ways, window lock and you do have your central locking right up here. To the right of the headlight switch, you do have the lever to adjust the brightness of your interior at night. And down below, you do have some storage. BMW door sills. The driver's seat in this X5 X-Drive 35i gets full powered adjustments. All of your controls are located right down here. You do have two-person memory as well.
Alright, so let's go ahead and see how she revs. The X5 xDrive 35i does get a quad zone automatic climate control system as standard. All of your front controls are located right here. It is quite simple to use. You do have your fan speed, temperature, automatic and different modes for the driver's side and the same set of fan speed, temperature, automatic and different modes for the front passenger side. Apart from that, you also do have your front and rear defrost, maximum air conditioning, air conditioning, recirculation as well as sync. Sync means if you have it turned on, the driver's side will control all of the controls, but if you turn it off, each side will have their own individual controls. Standard on the Malaysian Spec X5 xDrive 35i is BMW's Navigation System Professional with various media connectivity options, a 10.2-inch high-definition display, BMW apps, BMW teleservices, and the Hi-Fi loudspeaker system with 9 speakers. For stock sound system, the speakers in the X5 does sound quite good. The 10.2 inch screen right above is actually controlled using your set of controls right down here. You do have your media, radio, menu, net, um, telephone, navigation shortcut buttons, your back and option buttons, as well as the revised iDrive touch um, knob that now features a touch interface right on top. But the knob still goes up, down, left, right, scrolls to the left, scrolls to the right, and clicks down for enter. Now back to the screen, let's start with the menu that's right on top, and that is multimedia. Click the knob down to select that option, and we are brought to your main multimedia menu. You can access your CD, DVD menu, your music collection, your external devices, as well as your sound system settings. You do have your treble, bass, balance and fader, volume settings, as well as resetting the um, settings back to factory settings. Music collection is basically um, the hard drive on this system that allows you to store music apart from your navigation data. Under external devices, you do have USB, auxiliary, Bluetooth audio streaming and all that. And right here we are in your main USB screen. If there is an album art present, it will show up right there. But to the right, you do have your song information with the artist, album, title, song duration down below. And to the left, some USB options. Right on top, you do have your currently playing playlist, perform a search, 
look through your playlists, more media options. You do have your audiobooks, podcasts, and video. Import new music to the system, as well as go back a song and go forward a song. To go back to, your, to the previous menu, just hit the knob to the left. Now, say we are in your main USB screen. If you did not want to click the knob to the left three times to go back to the main menu, you can always hit menu straight away to go back to the main menu. Next up, you do have radio, and in radio, you can access your FM AM stations, look at your list of available radio stations in the area, do a manual tuning um, search and all that. You also do have your telephone menu up next and in this menu you can look at your phone book redial your last number look at your receive calls dial a number and all that you can also access your bluetooth menu where you can pair a phone delete a phone look at your paired devices and the like navigation now we are in your destination input menu. In destination input, you can input your address with your different countries, postcodes, streets, and all that. Look at your recent destinations, points of interest, address book, map, saved trips, and ex um, enter your GPS coordinates. Right now, we are in your main maps. At this point, using scrolling the knob left and right zooms in and out of the map. Clicking the knob to the left brings us to your map um, options with your guidance instructions, spoken instructions, your route criteria, alternative routes, your points of interest, interactive map. Now previously, in the iDrive versions without the touch interface right on top, you have to use the knob to go up, down, left and right on the, inter on the interactive map. Now you can still use that, but you can also use the touch interface right on top to just um, scroll up, scroll down, left, right, whichever direction you want to go to. As simple as that. Clicking the knob down brings up a list of options. You can show the destination, display current location, change map view, exit interactive map, and all that. Next up, you can change your different map views north oriented, direction of travel, perspective, and your additional map information. Next up, we do have Office where you can store contacts and notes, BMW connected drive with all of your necessary um, service center numbers and whatnot. You can also access your BMW apps right here. Vehicle information. Right on top, you do have your efficient, uh, your efficient dynamics monitor showing you your fuel consumption data. You can also access your EcoPro tips and all that. And now what's interesting about this system is, apart from the um, owner's manual in the form of a book that BMW will supply you when you buy the car, there is also an onboard system. Basically, instead of stopping by the side of the road, pulling out the owner's handbook to um, see what's that particular function, you can always search through this menu. There are three ways to search the different parts of the car. There is quick reference via the different most used parts of the car. Picture search via the different parts of the car. And a full-blown owner's handbook. You can type out the letter or you can use the touch interface to spell out the letter. L. G H 
T. And once you spell out the letter, you click the knob down. You're brought to your list of search options. You also do have your onboard computer right here with your range, distance to destination, time of arrival, average consumption and average speed. The distance to destination and time of arrival um, data will only show up if you do have your navigation active. Your trip computer with your start time, journey time, distance traveled, average consumption and average speed. Basically at the start of a road trip, you can reset this data and it will tell you like when did you start, how long it took to your destination and all that. You can also access your vehicle status right here with your flat tire monitoring system, engine oil level, service indicators, check control, your sport displays, I find this menu really interesting because it tells you how much power and torque you are using. And lastly, your X drive status. The last menu is your settings. In this menu, you can set your um, display brightness, instrument cluster display, control display, time, date, units, um, your touchpad information, sound, speed and all that. You can also um, adjust the opening height of your powered rear hatch. And you can access your different profiles and perform a software update. And that's about it. Now, if you go back to the, say, the main USB menu, if we click the knob to the right, it brings up your list of options. You can activate your split screen. Say, so you can have your um, media information to one side, your efficient dynamics to the other, or your navigation to one side, your media to the other, and all that. You can adjust your um, split screen content or you can just turn it off you can also turn off the display as well as look up your external devices on the owner's handbook and access your multimedia options so for example, if you're in navigation and you access this options menu, you can show up your navigation on the owner's handbook as well as access your navigation um, options. Or if you're in your radio, show up the radio on the owner's handbook and access your radio options and all, um, all that. And that's about it. Down below here, you do have your volume and power knob, your seat track buttons, selecting between FM AM, your CD player, it is MP3 compatible, selecting your different modes, as well as your eight shortcut buttons. You do have a couple of cup holders down here, as well as a storage area or ashtray, and a cigarette lighter or power outlet, depending on what you use them for. You can also cover up the cup holder and storage area if you do not want to use it. You do have a heads up display right there.
central locking and as shown earlier this car does have power folding mirrors On the steering wheel, the left spoke houses your, your cruise control, the right spoke houses your various audio controls. You can adjust your volume right there, select your different modes, and this wheel allows you to um, scroll through your different tracks or radio stations. You also do have your on-hook off-hook button for the Bluetooth telephone system right here, as well as your voice control. Help! To hear the voice commands in the table display, say voice commands. To obtain general information on voice inputs, say help with voice input. To hear important short commands with examples, say help with examples. Cancel. Now if you activated your voice control and you do not know what to say, just ask for help and the system will walk you through your various commands. On the left stall, you do have your indicator controls. And at the end of the indicator stall, the bottom button activates your automatic high beams and the top button scrolls through your different multi-information displays. Right now, the display is turned off. You do have your range, compass, average fuel consumption, instant fuel consumption, average speed, date, and back to turning the display off. To the right, you do have your gear position just below the ref counter and above the um, instant fuel consumption meter. And down below, you do have your outside temperature. In the middle, your mileage and trip meter. And on the left, your time. On the right stall, you do have your wiper controls. If you press the button at the end of the wiper stall, you can activate your automatic wipers and twist this knob right here to activate your rear wipers. The steering wheel in this car is tilted and telescopic. It is fully powered as well. Adjust it using this knob right here. If you locate the button to the right of the start engine button, this button actually activates or deactivates your auto start stop system. If you have it activated, the engine will momentarily shut off when you arrive at a stop, such as a traffic light or a traffic jam, to save that extra bit of petrol or diesel depending on what the car is running on. Just below the gear lever, you do have your electronic parking brake. It is currently engaged. To disengage it, put your foot on the brake and push the lever down. To engage it, simply pull the lever back up. Down below, you do have the auto hold function for the parking brake, whereby if activated and you arrive at a stop, such as a traffic light, and you lift your foot off the brake, the car is still in drive, the car won't actually move forward or roll back, which is quite convenient. You do have a little bit of storage right there. And you do have a center armrest right here. With storage down below. You also do have your auxiliary and USB ports right in here. Auto dimming, rear view mirror. and your interior LED lighting. You do have a sun visor with vanity mirror and LED lights for the driver's side. And a grip handle for the driver. Alright, so I'm just gonna leave the engine on for a little while longer while we go check out the back seats and the rear climate control.
BMW door sills for the back as well. And to gain access to the third row seats, locate this lever right here, pull it, and flip the whole seat forward. Now that I'm in the third row, it is actually quite cramped back here. Um, not much room to stretch out my legs. And I do have to duck down a little bit so I don't touch the roof with my head. I'm about 5 foot 7 which is about 1.7 meters tall. I guess the back seats are better for um, smaller people. You still do get air vents at the back right here, and a couple of cup holders. You can also fold the seat backs down by locating this lever for this seat and simply flipping it down. There is also a similar lever for that side as well. And the one in the center. Fold the center part down via that lever. But you do get some storage down here with a bottle holder, your window control, sunshades for the rear windows, air vents. On the P-pillar for both sides, center aircon vents, with your rear climate control down below. You do have your temperature for both sides, automatic, different modes, fan speed and maximum air conditioning. Down below you do have some storage, as well as a couple of power outlets. You do get storage pockets on the front seat backs and a rear center armrest with cup holders. Right on top for both sides, you do have grip handles with hooks and your rear LED lights. As for space, I'm about 5 foot 7, which is about 1.7 meters tall. I do have the driver's seat in a position that I would feel comfortable in. And I do have room to stretch out my legs. I have about this much leg room. And actually, quite a lot of headroom. About this much.
Alright, so I guess that's it for the startup. We can turn it off right now. And continue with the rest of the tour. Now there are three ways to operate the powered rear hatch. There is the button inside the cabin that I showed you earlier on, there is a touchpad right beneath the BMW badge, and there is also the button on the key fob. It is a split level unit, so you do have your rear hatch right above that goes up and the tailgate that drops down just pull this lever and let it fall down with the last row of seats in place Boot space stands at 274 litres. Folding the last row seat backs down increases boot space to 650 litres. With both the last row and middle row seat backs folded, boot space then expands to 1870 litres. There is a storage pocket to the left of the boot, and to the right there is a storage area with a power outlet. Underneath the boot floor is the vehicle's toolkit and some storage. Also, when the X5 is in 5-seater mode, a cargo cover can be fixed to keep items in the boot secure. Sunshade for this side as well. And you do have adjustable headrests for all three rows.
the front passenger seat is fully powered as well. It just loses out on the memory settings that you can find on the driver's side. You do have your central locking buttons on this side as well. Lockable glove box. It is quite big. You do have a storage net right here as well. And you do have a sun visor with vanity mirror and LED lights on this side as well. Alright, so let's start it up with the door close. Alright, so I guess that's it for the startup and full vehicle tour video of this 2014 BMW X5 X-Drive 35i. Thanks for watching and goodbye.